Okay, I want to talk about some concepts and how you can create objects. There's actually quite a few ways that you can create objects in JavaScript, so I want to go over the five main ones. And they are, because you can see from this list right here, object literals, using object create, using a function with the new keyword, creating a factory functions and using closures with them. This is a very useful one. And then using JavaScript classes, which really are just kind of syntactical sugar for what's going on in the background here. So let's take a look at these. Object literals. Simplest, most straightforward one. You create an object. So I've got a variable here. I'm setting it equal to this object and I'm just literally writing out the properties. That's what object literals are. So property one, two, and three, value one, value two, these ones are just properties with values. And then property three is a method, it's a function. And what I'm gonna do for each one of these is kind of replicate this object literal. The prop three is gonna be a method that returns the value that's inside of prop one. So you can see with each of these how you can access the other values from the third property. All right, so I'm just gonna run this so we can see that this is going to work with all of them. So here's the first one. I'm logging out. They're all numbered here. This is object one, prop one, prop two. There are the values. Prop three is a method, and then I'm calling the method. So that's what I do on the next line. I'm going to write out the number with the object, and then I'm gonna call method three, the prop three method to see what I get back. So value, okay. Nothing too earth shattering here. It is just an object literal. That's a very simple syntax. What the downside of this is when you need to create a whole bunch of objects that are similar, having to write this out again and again so you actually get multiple objects, that can be very time consuming. And then we get into the whole idea with shallow copy versus deep copy with objects as well. So object literals, very easy to write. If you need one or two objects, just write the objects out. If you need a lot of objects, this one's not going to work for you. So object create. You want to create a brand new object. Okay, I've got a, a couple variations of this one inside of here. I'm using the object create method. The first parameter inside of here is a prototype object. So I could just put null or an empty object in here. That's my prototype. Then I'm defining what the properties are. So if it's just a property that holds a value, we've got prop one, prop two, and then you have to define the property descriptor. So there's all these different properties that you can assign. They've all got default values. If you want, you could just do this. You can just assign a value. So this is the equivalent of what we're doing here, assigning the value into this, and then we're just taking the default values for all the property descriptors. Now, property descriptors include things like writable. Are you able to change the value? Enumerable, when you do a loop, when you're saying um, to console.log the object out, um, do you want it to appear? Like here, you'll see prop1 shows up, but prop2 doesn't, and that's because prop2 has enumerable set to false. Configurable, are you allowed to change the values of these property descriptors? And then the value is the value, of course. Um, so what I did here was I put my variable here, proto, which is in itself an object. The object has inside of it one property called prop3, which is the function that writes out the value of prop1. So I'm inheriting this. This is the prototype for this object2 that I'm creating, that I'm writing out. So it works. I'm creating it, prop3 becomes a method on the prototype. So every time I do a call to this, I'm going to be getting the prototype attached to it, which means this prop3 method is going to be attached to that object as well. So if I do the, I call this again and again and again, they're all going to have their own. Now, I don't have this wrapped inside of a function or anything else, so I'd have to write the whole thing out, and I'm back to what I'm doing with the object literal. The short form, short version of this is if I change this to just an empty object and I'm not using proto, I could just do this. Oops. I'm taking obj2, which is the one that I created right here, and I'm setting the property three equal to the function. 
it does the same thing. I'm just I'm adding this as a method directly onto this object instead of putting it on the prototype. But I'm creating a new object. All three are there. So if I run this again, there's prop three showing up again, and it still works. Here, it didn't show up because it was on the prototype. Here, it's attached to this actual object itself. That's why it shows up when I try to console log it. All right. So that's object literal, object create. Using a function to create new objects, we can do this with the new keyword. So if you put new in front of a call to a function, what it wants to do is, if you do not put a return statement here, functions normally, if you call them and you don't have a return statement in the function, they will pass back undefined. But if you call them with the keyword new in front, what they want to do is pass back an object. They will pass back an instance of whatever this thing is. So I'm creating a brand new object when I do this. I'm passing in value one and value two here. So now I'm going to be get, getting a little bit more reuse out of this. I could create another object and call new obj, pass in two new values, and it would work the same way. And I'm accessing prop one, whatever the value of prop one is. So this, this works. You want to create a new object using a function with the new keyword? This is a great way to get some reuse out of it. And we can come down here. Here's number three. And it's working. Prop one, prop two, prop three. Prop three is a function. And you call prop, prop three, you get the value of prop one showing up. So it all works. Great way to do it. And this was sort of the um, original way of doing this, creating a... Uh, a it's like a factory function sort of thing, but we're using the new constructor to tell it specifically to create an object. The fourth one, factory functions with closures. So here I'm calling the function again. I'm not using the new keyword, so I'm going to explicitly tell the function that I want to return an object. This object's got prop one, two, and three. Prop one, prop two, now, the thing that makes this one different is that I've got a closure. I can now, because I'm returning this object here, it's being put into object four. When I write out object four, sure enough, I have everything here. But the reason that this works is that I am creating a closure. I'm declaring variables here outside of the object that I'm returning. So now, these values that I've passed in are going to be attached to this. I'm keeping this instance so I can reference prop one, prop two, and later on I can get back to the value of prop one. Okay, so that's a factory function with closure. And then the final one, JavaScript classes. Define your class, define your constructor. I'm doing the same sort of thing again. I'm using the new keyword to call on the class. This behind the scenes really is doing what this number three is doing. But what I'm doing here is I'm using the class syntax, my constructor function. This is the one that's going to run when I call new. I pass in the two values. I put those onto the properties, one and two. Then I have prop three defined inside the class as a method that I can call. Because it's inside the class, because I've called new, I've created an instance of this object. The instance is saved inside of here and I'm able to get at the prop three. It would be sitting on the prototype so I can access it. And then pro this dot prop one will reference the instance that I've created right here. So object five, that's the instance. When I call prop three, it's going to say, all right, what's the prop one value of object five? That's what I'm going to be getting here, which is the value that was passed in right here. And there it is. So that's several ways of creating objects. Uh, I will leave this as a code gist so you can download and you can play with it and experiment until you get comfortable. There's nothing that says that you have to use any one of these methods. You can use any approach you want to create objects. What you really want to do is understand how they all work so that when you are working with somebody else's code or somebody else's library and they've written the code in a certain way, you want to understand how the parts fit together, how this all works so that you can make your own custom changes.
So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.